So the horticulture training program started back in 2001 as a training program for inmates that were looking to develop job skills. And we decided that training you know, inmates or people that were incarcerated uh, with developing skills that they could actually come out with and go into an industry that was looking for labor was a really good idea. And we teach everything from composting to vegetable varieties to soil health to landscape design at some point in time to just trying to give them the basic skills that they would need to go into the landscape nursery industry. Currently we have uh, 20 or so inmates that are they're employed um, in the composting, recycling and agricultural program and I think it's going well at this point. The gardening program that we're running here, we have 10 people assigned to it. Yeah, they have to go through a job application process, be vetted by the unit that they're in, and then they're uh, handpicked by the medium unit team and myself uh, to make sure that we get good fits into the, into the gardening program. It's changed from mostly ornamentals to now we're focusing on uh, producing food for the uh, prison itself and also any excess food is going to food banks. Well we have a multitude of different crops. We have um, tomatoes and peppers and string beans and cabbage and a lot of lettuce and greens like beet greens, collard greens. Um, and what we do is we harvest that, bring it to the kitchen and then they go and they um, use it throughout the, um, the different meal cycles. You know, we have 950 inmates here, so we're doing about 3,000 meals a day. So everything we produce, we can consume uh, very quickly. There's no real storage issues, and, and we eat it fairly quickly. It's nice to reduce a little bit of the tax burden, and uh, the inmates, uh, you know, are doing the, the work themselves. And I think there's an expectation on the outside, from taxpayer standpoint, that the inmates are gainfully employed and they're raising some of their food, and so it satisfies all those needs. It really does help the whole attitude in here. It makes everything a smoother running operation, which makes it easier for security and better for them. You know, anytime you can keep the inmates busy, you know, their hands, you know, hands busy, their minds are busy thinking about what they're doing, and the instance of behavior has changed dramatically amongst people that have taken this program. Uh, there are less instances of, of demerits or behavioral issues inside uh, for this group, so you know, it's therapeutic for them. It gives them a purpose to be there. There's been a lot of different benefits. Number one, as far as being locked up in a maximum security prison, um, being out here and allowed to do horticulture and gardening, and it, it's awesome. You, you couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better, better thing to do. And I'm very grateful and honored to be able to be part of it. Everybody looks forward to the cucumbers and the tomatoes and the fresh onions and the salads. It's pretty cool, yeah. It shows you good work and skills with others. It shows you um, what you could do in your free time. And it's also a, uh, an outlet. Being able to work on something and then actually see it grow and you know, care for it. I mean, not worrying about just yourself. It kind of you know, relaxes you. It's important for people to have a reason to get out of bed and have some meaning in their life. And uh, you know, we have a canine program, we have uh, the, the wood shop, you know, we have other jobs that people do here. And uh, they find that the, the agriculture program is meaningful, purposeful work, and they're able to make a little bit of money and, and help you know, pay off the restitution, um, pay um, um, any uh, fines or anything uh, that they owe on the outside. And so it's a win for everyone. Mark's been critical to the success of the program here. I mean, he's been dedicated for this for a couple decades now. He coordinates the classes, teaches the classes to the men, you know, primarily in the winter, preparing for the spring uh, planting season. But he also gives us a lot of advice. He, he stops by um, every other week. His years of experience come here and he can point out an issue and tell us what the problem is and give us a solution that we can work on. And he makes it fit our environment, which is super. A lot of people come in and give ideas, comments, but they don't realize that we're working inside of a prison system. So he's been just tremendous. The, really the primary purpose of the Maine State Prison is to make sure that um, we reduce recidivism, you know, reduce the uh, frequency that somebody comes back to prison. And I think that the agricultural program goes a long ways to calming them and making them feel proud of something that they're doing. And uh, the whole mentorship of, of an individual that's gardening here to be able to spend time with a guy like Mark is uh, priceless, really, to be able to talk and, and uh, they can see the example of of uh, a good man and, and a good man that uh, makes a difference in the community. So, uh, very meaningful. 
a lot of these people have not had success in their lives. Uh, and to be able to watch them have success and the joy that they get out of the success of planting and seeing things come into blossom, whether it be flowers or you know, harvesting fruit. One of the first things they tell me now is how many pounds of, of vegetables they have put into the, either the food bank or into the kitchen. And they're so proud of that. And it's really a, a pleasure for me to see them have that success and be proud of what they're doing. It's humbled me in a lot of ways because you know, I know the, the situations that they're in for you know, probably 20 out of the 24 hours, it's not a pleasant place, but those four hours that they get to actually garden is you know, something that they look forward to. And I'm, I'm just really pleased to be a part of that.